Pedro there and thank you for joining me on this week's special interview segment. I'm your host, Eddie Nyadwa. On today's episode of the program, I'll be speaking to a gentleman who is the former Gatanga Member of Parliament and also has served at the cabinet level. That's none other than Honorable Peter Kenneth. Moshimiwa, thank you for getting time to speak to us on Lolwe. Asante sana. Na karibu. Asante. Okay. Now, uh, first things first. How are you dealing with the, the corona pandemic? It's global. Um, actually, most of the times working from home. That's why we had to set this particular time because uh, I was coming to the office on the very few rare days I come. It's a serious pandemic and people have to take it very, very seriously. It's extremely serious. Oh. And uh, I think we have to appeal to every Kenyan to adhere to the protocols that the Ministry of Health is talking about. Uh, hygiene issues, social distance, and anything that uh, will help is, is of course very welcome. Oh. Yeah. Fine. Now let us dive into the deep waters. Now, Mushinu, every time we see you in the company of other national leaders, because not so long ago you visited the home of the Kotu Secretary General, where you are with, among others, the former Prime Minister Raila Amolo Odinga. And uh, when we see you coalescing around these leaders, we can't help but speculate that you are somehow positioning yourself to be the Mount Kenya Kingpin after Uhuru. I was, are we speculating on the right direction or we are so wrong? I think your speculation can be split into two. One in the wrong direction and another one in a good direction. In the sense that every Kenyan has a right to converge and to see how best they can discuss as a way forward for our country. And the Right Honourable Prime Minister is uh, one such gentleman who has a long history of our country. And uh, whenever he has had time and he has invited uh, those he would like to invite, and I happen to be one of them on certain occasions, it's always a pleasure to hear from him about his thoughts about how our country can forge ahead. Now, as to why people would speculate about me, perhaps is a positive note. I think I've been there as a member of parliament, as an assistant minister. I've run for the presidency of this country. I've run for the governorship of Nairobi. Uh, I too have ideas that can be put with other ideas to make our country a better country. Uh, and, you know, set a proper foundation for our country going forward. As a country, we've had very many opportunities. We have missed many of them. But whenever there is a glimmer of hope to convert the opportunities on the way, I think every right-thinking Kenyan would like to be in that position to ensure we move in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the handshake, and I feel it, the handshake between the, His Excellency the President and the Right Honorable Prime Minister is one good gesture that you followed because it has created peace and stability would uh, endear our country to making progress, to be able to sort out a lot of the very many problems that we have as a country. Okay. Speaking of the BBI, Many a times when leaders speak about the Building Bill Initiative, they only highlight the issue of peace, tranquility, and a working environment for the day's government. However, there are other nitty-gritties that are contained in the proposal that Kenyans gave to the BBI uh, Task Force. From where you sit, what proposals do you think will be well for the country moving forward that you wish 
to be captured in the final report of the BBI? I think BBI, for those who have read it, and those who do not wish to politicize uh, the features of it, know that it has very good grounds of creating a peaceful country uh, anchored on the handshake between the two main contestants in the last election. There is a clause that says that leaders who have been tainted, who have issues, should not even run for an office. I think it's a very good clause. Because one of our problems is that our electoral system allows everybody to go and contest, even those with ill-gotten money. But if it can bring a standard that will bar people with dubious backgrounds from running, it means the country can then have a choice of clear thinking and clean people to run for positions. Number two, for many years, and I remember when we were agitating for CDF in the year 2003, people wanted to fill up something from national government going back to the grassroots. Now, BBI enhances county allocation to 35%. That's a huge allocation. Which is a huge allocation. And uh, how I would really wish that our Senate concentrated more on how that money is spent or how this big allocation will be spent. Because I get a feeling that a lot of Kenyans don't feel the services at county level where they should actually feel. And of course, there is the main one which has been touted that if you create three, four more additional positions, you'll be creating a huge wage bill. And, uh, but in the end, if we were to go that style of having uh, enlarging the executive, it also means because we are a very tribal country, you can at least bring some communities to the table and work on national cohesion. And also, when you have a team running of five, in one formation, it's no longer a team of two, which means you appeal to more Kenyans than before. Okay. Let us now go to the Senate. I'm very certain that you followed closely the debates about revenue allocation. And unfortunately, for the eighth time, our senators, our honorable senators, <coughs> have failed to reach a consensus on how well to distribute or rather how well to allocate money to counties. There is a section of senators who are for the mantra, one man, one vote, one shilling. However, senators from the counties that are large with less population feel that such a formula will somehow deny them the much needed resources to develop their counties. From where you sit, how do you see this allocation? First, I'm disappointed that our senators have uh, politicized a very important situation. A situation that is meant to enhance devolution further. The framers of our constitution in 2010 were very aware that perhaps certain counties were ahead in development than others and established a clause under Section 204 on Equalization Fund, which was meant to bring counties that felt marginalized into the fore with more allocations. Now, my view, and this has always been the view from what I've read in terms of development, is that when you come to share resources, resources must follow the population for which they are meant to deliver services. Now, that to me is first and foremost key. The second one is what you call equity. And perhaps the third is what you call land mass. And then you balance between what counties get and what the national government also allocates for national projects then you come up with a formula 
that takes care of all that and we stop fighting about it. We stop politicizing because that is exactly what we have done. You cannot today, and we have not even established what are the marginal country counties because we need to do it. But you cannot marginalize people who are marginalized in counties that might not be marginalized. They are also Kenyans and they also deserve service provision. So in my view, Senate stops should stop playing side issues. Senate needs to demand accountability of the funds that have been allocated so far to county governments to see absorption, to see usage, to see where it has been misused, so that we also don't devolve corruption to counties. No, we could be talking about devolution and we are devolving corruption. Yeah. Now, Honorable Kenneth, you have served at one point at the Treasury from the uh, Assistant Minister, and you are very well conversant on how money is disbursed to different state agencies. And uh, at some point, the concern of the Treasury was that you allocate huge sums of money to certain state agencies, but the absorption of such budgets is not there. Is this the same for some of the counties in our country today? But you know that is the oversight role of Senate. Perhaps Senate, uh, other than stopping these sideshows, should come out and tell us which counties have absorbed well, which counties have delivered services best, so that we are all very comfortable with that situation. And let me tell you, when I say you need to follow population, I was in the Ministry of Planning when the 209 census was done. And of course, it was a feeling which was justified that certain figures at that time were doctored. And the Ministry nullified where it felt that census results were doctored. And of course, the, day, the counties or districts that were going to bear the consequences went to court and got an order of status quo. Now, what followed meant that resources were still going to be divided with the figures that were felt to have been doctored. So there was an anomaly from day one. Then you had census 2019, which by and large everybody has said it's a fair result. So you need to allocate resources with the class census. And you need to follow. Uh, when we were doing CDF, the first thing that allocation followed was equity. So say each constituency got 50 million flat. The second one was now uh, population, because all constituencies are, were not the same. Yeah. So you found constituencies that had more population, then had more allocation after the equity one at 50. Then you looked at land mass and poverty index, and you continued. So you kept on improving on the yes, allocation? Before. Yes, but you had a base which was based on equity, that we are all 210. So each constituency will get 50. Then you went to population. Then you went to poverty index and allocated more than that 50. Now based so, on these parameters. Yeah, yes. So you have to have a weighted system. So whatever side shows they are playing, it doesn't talk well for our country. Okay. Now let's talk about our beloved county, Nairobi. In 2017, you had an interest to be the governor of this great city. Fast forward 2020. We have a governor who cannot even access his office. The county of Nairobi has no speaker. She resigned just the other day. Even a clerk is on acting capacity. MCAs have been fighting day in, day out. Honorable Kenneth, is there a vacuum in leadership in the entire Nairobi? You know, sometimes the English have a saying, to let people lie on the beds they make. But let me put it this way. I've always had good ideas on how we can develop our country, our cities, and 
I have articulated them before. They are on record. They remain on record as we speak as to what my wishes or what my thinking. And it's not just my, my thinking, but also my think tank, which always goes ahead of me to think on what we can do to make a change. Because leadership is about making positive changes to those who are being led. So 2017, we had good ideas about Nairobi, and Nairobians had a different idea. So they have what they elected, and I think they are, they are in it for five years. Because the MCAs are the ones they elected, the governor is the one they elected, uh, they have a speaker who has uh, resigned. She was also part of the leadership for Nairobi. So unfortunately, it is what it is. But I also think that I would like uh, to commend the president for establishing the NMS because Nairobi requires more attention than any other county by the very nature that it is the capital of our country, but also the most populous county. So it does require some special attention. And therefore, I think that NMS was a good idea. And from what I gather or pick, is that NMS is doing a good job to the people of Nairobi. Yeah. So from where you said you are happy with the impetus NMS has put in service delivery in Nairobi? Well, in a democratic process, you would wish otherwise. That having held elections, everybody elected will be able to carry on their own responsibility. But like I said, Nairobi is a special case. Not just the capital, but also the most populous uh, county. Okay. Now, with NMS now operating in Nairobi, having been given four key functions, the Nairobians have seen their delivery. And the, the body also has immense support, especially directly from the president himself. So uh, uh, going forward to 2022, are we looking at a situation whereby Nairobi will not be necessarily be governed by a governor, but be... I think we'll have to office. discuss that when we cross the bridge. As at of now, there are no indications of that. But yes, there are examples in the world where the federal capital has always uh, had appointed or selected leadership rather than uh, rather than uh, make it go through an election. And I think there has been a motion before, and the case study was Washington in the United States. But that's what, so we haven't gotten there yet, yes. I just think that uh, in his wisdom, the president looked at the special needs of Nairobi and decided that it was good to establish an MS. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, as we come to a close of the interview, 2022 is fast approaching, we're just under two years to it. What should we look forward to, especially from your end? Well, I think God giving us life and days, we should play an integral role in uh, transiting from a retiring president to the next formation, but much more, first of all, understanding the problems of a majority of Kenyans and seeing how to seek solutions to deal with those problems. And they range from what farmers, farmers go through on a daily basis to unemployed young people, to many people in uh, various sectors that uh, if uh, were worked on, they would really help uh, grow our country faster. And therefore, the idea that we can even think of uh, reintroducing uh, the standard, uh, the meter gauge, to Eldoret, to Kisumu, to Nanyuki, and the projects that the president is thinking about in the next two years under the big four uh, are all things that, you know, would uh, spur the economy to grow. So there are things that we need to identify as problems of our country, 
And then based on that, we can look for leadership that will identify with those problems and seek to have solutions to those problems. Okay. Yeah. In the event President Uru reshuffles his cabinet, would you mind serving in that new cabinet? Well, I cannot be speculative. First, it is his prerogative uh, to deal with that. But as I've always said, anything that will help our country, anything that will help or add more impetus to the teams that are there, I am a team player and I'll play as a team player. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.